Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on what time or what place or what area of the world you're at. It is uh, 10 a.m. my time, so it's uh, not too early, not too late, perfect time. All right, let me get situated here, make sure everything's working. I'm a little unprepared today. Uh, if you were on one of my past streams, I mentioned a big backyard project I have going on, so I'm actually been trying to jump back and forth between talking to the landscaper and actually working, uh, and it got me a little scattered brained. Hey, Raphael, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Should be fun. Uh, although I'm a little unprepared, should be pretty easy, nonetheless, because Prism is easy, right? Everyone knows Prism's easy. And if I get stuck, I'll just use Google. So I figured today we would talk about uh, custom region adapters. We'll start simple and then maybe if we have time, we can do a, a more complicated one or take one from the internet that I've already written and dissect it. I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just go with the flow. Zoltra Lord, good to see you, my friend. Welcome. How was everyone's uh, 4th of July weekend? Mine was pretty awesome. I had a four day weekend and I didn't do much of anything. It was amazing. I did uh, binge Stranger Things season three, which is awesome. I really enjoy that series. Uh, and then of course, the fireworks with the family. We had to do fireworks, lots and lots of fireworks. And no, I did not cause any fires this time. All right. Let's uh, give everyone just a few minutes to join before we start jumping into some code. You know, I had to upgrade my water bottle or my glass because normally during these streams, I get like a, a normal size glass, just not enough water. So I upped my game, upped my water game. All right, so... Uh, it's 10, 10, 2 minutes. It's been plenty of time for people to join. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and jump into some Visual Studio. All right. So what I have here is I have a very simple uh, blank Prism application. My main window here is come on Visual Studio. Every time I swear is a actually we'll need to modify this a little bit because all it has in it is a region for some navigation. Uh, if we look at our app.xaml.cs, we can see it's a simple Prism app. We are resolving our shell and we're not really registering any type of types for, uh, for anything because we probably really won't use this much uh, in this video, actually, because we're just going to be doing custom region adapters. So uh, let's go ahead and start modifying this a tad because uh, I need to be able to uh, inject some views into this region, right? So let's go... Uh, Create dot row definitions. Let's see. Uh, it's the same way to load modules from directly in Prism 7, right? Yeah, same way. Nothing's really changed there. Row definition. Let's do two, because I'm going to throw some buttons in this. Uh-oh. Oh, oh whew, I thought I got stuck with the, uh, got hit with that Visual Studio copy paste dialog. And we'll go height. Auto on this bad boy. And we'll do the, the beautiful star here. And then we will stick this in the second row, which is actually index one. And let's throw a button in here. Uh, that'll work. And we'll say inject, sure. Now I'm going to make this code kind of nasty. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the stuff that's not important, right? So we'll just do a good old code behind. Let's go ahead and uh, ask for our uh, iRegion manager in here. There we go. Uh, we'll use that. And I want to add a field initializer. Perfect. And then in here, we're going to say uh, region manager 
dot regions. Uh, this we're gonna we're gonna force this. Like I said, this is not gonna be pretty. This is not gonna be production code. And then we're gonna add a view. Okay, that means we need a view. Let's go ahead and add a view right quick. So let's add a new item. I may or may not use a view model. I'm not sure. So we'll just uh, add a prism user control. Call this view A. Okay, there's the view model. Don't care about that. There's the view. Let's go uh, text block text equals hello from view A. Okay, that should work. Let's make that a little bigger. Font size, wait, 72. Bam, that's big. All right. And then I'm just going to new view A. Okay, that, that should work, right? I mean, off the top of my head. Let's go ahead and uh, let's try this. I don't think I messed that up. That is the quick and dirty demo Prism app. For now, but what about DI? Uh, nothing changes really, just the way you uh, create things. We can convert it, inject, there we go, hello from VUA, perfect. So for example, if you really wanted to do DI and like do something like this, okay, let's do this. Container registry, register type for navigation, view A. Okay, and then come back to our code behind. We can comment that out. Region manager dot request navigate uh, content region. And then the source view A. There we go, Raphael. Is that better? We're doing more prism friendly. We're still in code behind, so it's not production ready, but you know, we're not uh, newing up any objects, right? We're relying on, on DI, boom, same thing. Okay, actually that's so ugly now, I don't even wanna look at it. All right, so today I thought we'd talk about custom region adapters. And essentially what, you, what a region adapter is is it's a class that adapts a view to an element and what i mean by that is if you look at this content control you can see that we are adapting this or we're saying hey we're going to use this content control as a region right this is a placeholder for views i don't know what these views look like i don't know what they are i don't know where they're coming from but this is a placeholder for views and at some point in time this element is going to host a view. Okay, cool. Uh, works perfect for content control, right? Well, of course it does. Because out of the box, Prism uh, uses content control, items control, and selector, I believe, off the top of my head. Uh, supports those out of the box. And so what actually happens here behind the scenes is when you add this, uh, this region, okay, not only are you identifying this as a region, but there are a region adapters that Prism has that adapts this content control to a view. And what that means is when you adapt something, uh, you're basically setting the main property of this element. So for example, you can imagine a content control has a content property. Well, essentially what it says is, hey, content control dot content equals this view I just created. Right, that's all it does. So for tab control, it is say, you know, tab control dot items dot add that control. Like that's all an adapter really does. And we'll see what we create our own. But what happens if we were to change this to say a stack panel, right? Uh, let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens. Probably not, nothing good. Nothing good at all, actually. No, we have an exception. And it's because there is no region adapter for the stack panel, right? And you're like, but Brian, you said uh, you can use any element to host a region. And you can, 
You can, but you have to write your own redirect chapter for that. Uh, tab doc panel. Yes, you know, uh, I actually, after this simple example, if I have time, we'll, we'll do one for the Infragistics uh, doc manager because I have one on my blog and I'll just copy it and paste it in. Uh, okay, so the first step to this is I'm just gonna create another folder just to kind of keep things clean. Uh, I'll call this core. You know, I used to call this infrastructure, but that's just, that name is so long. It's just easier to say core. And then I'll create a uh, region adapters namespace here. And let's go ahead and add a new class. You know, it's kind of quiet in here, isn't it? Like, let's add some, uh, some music. I don't like that though. I don't like that. What's, uh, hmm. That's not good. We need, um, not hype. Chill, happy, rock. Let's chip tune. Okay, that's not what I want. How about, what's happy? Hey, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. All right, we'll go with that. Is that too loud? Volume good? I can turn it down some if I have to. Let's see. It might be good. If someone complains, I'll turn the volume down. Okay, so we have this class, and I'm gonna call this the stack panel region adapter. Okay, so the first step to creating this uh, region adapter is we need to derive from the region adapter, whoop, region adapter, base of T. And T is going to be the element that you're using. So in this case, a stack panel. So let's add our uh, usings in here. And then we're going to implement the uh, abstract base class. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, now we're gonna see here, whoop, we wanna make that public actually. So our, uh, well, you know what? I'm not sure if this really matters or not. It may or may not. However, we are getting a, uh, an issue, an error here because we don't have a constructor. Uh, so generate constructor. We'll do that. Because as you can see, this constructor requires the I region behavior factory. Uh, and this is where we can start getting its region behaviors, which are even cooler, uh, but we will get to that later. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about the create region area here. Now there's like three different types. You have just a region. So we're gonna say turn new, you say just region. You don't really use this one much. Uh, the ones you really gonna care about is what's called a single active region. Excuse me, a single active region. Or uh, what was it called? I haven't used this. Oh, all active region. So the difference between the two is how the region behaves. Okay. So for example, a single active region means that there's only one view active at the same time. For example, a tab control would actually be a single active region because you select the tab, right? And that view that tab is the only active region at a time. However, in other cases where you have maybe a multi-window scenario where you can have multiple views active at the same time, or maybe you have a control like a, uh, I don't know, a, a panel, some type of custom panel, like on Facebook where you have a whole bunch of different panels that could be viewed at the same time. Essentially, if you can have more than one view active at the same time, you'd use a all active region. Otherwise, it's a single. Most of the time, you're using a single active region. Okay, and then the adapt. The adapt is where the magic just happens. Let's see, could just imagine Brian's experience when Windows Media Player came out. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, 
So the adapt method, this is what we care about. Okay, this is where all the action happens. This is where you're going to write your code to adapt the incoming view to the target region, which is the stack panel. So the first thing we have to do is we're gonna grab the region, okay? Then we're gonna say views. Now, we need to clarify here because there's two properties here. You see, we have views and we have active views, okay? The difference between these two is that the views represent the actual number of views contained within that element. So if the stack panel had three children in it, okay, you would have three different views in this collection. However, active views is the number of views that are only active. This does not represent the total number of views. It only represents the active one. So if we go back to that, uh, to that tab control example, where you have the selected tab, that's one active view. That's it. Although you might have 10 tabs, 10 views in that region, only one of them is active. So that's active view. So make sure you're hooking into the correct collection because we're going to hook into the collection changed event. Uh, we'll do the plus equals sender event. Whoops. If I can type. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. That looks good, right? Okay, so we're going to hook into this event and we're going to say, hey, if e dot action equals Ooh, that's nasty we have add move replace reset we're gonna go with add so anytime a new view is added to this collection and actually that's gonna bother me I'm going to get rid of that and we'll do our control dot using statement okay so anytime we have something added to this collection added to the views collection, right? So that's going to be either through request navigate or the regions.add. This collection is going to change with the add notification. Okay. Then what we're going to do is going to say, hey, for each, uh, we we'll say, whoops, capitalize frame work element. Element. Uh, I'll just say view. How about that? In e dot new items. Okay. So you can add more than one view at a time. So it's possible this could be a collection. So you're going to loop through each one of those views that have been added to that collection, right? Then we're going to get the region target. Region target dot children dot add element. Oh, not element, sorry, view. Right? Okay. Kind of get what's going on. I'm just going to monitor my view inception. Yes, view inception. Why would we need custom region adapters? Okay, you must have missed this part, the Zultra Lord, of why we need a custom region adapter. Because out of the box, Prism doesn't support every possible control out there as a region, right? So right now, we're using a stack panel as a region. So I'm going to start the app. And what's going to happen is we're going to get an exception. Because Prism doesn't have a region adapter built in for stack panel. It supports like content control, items control, and selector. Okay. Stack panel is one that's just not covered. Because I don't know how often stack panel is needed, right? Uh, we should write a library to cover up the most common controls in WPF. Yes, someone please do that. Someone write an extension for Prism uh, that will write region adapters for all the most common controls in WPF. That would be amazing and a great community contribution. Okay, so in order to support the stack panel, we have to write this custom region adapter. Okay. This reach adapter tells Prism how we are going to adapt the incoming control to the region. So as we can see here, if we look, we have this class derived from region adapter base of T, which is the type of control that's hosting, that is acting as that region. And in the adapt method, whenever 
the views collection changed. We are when we're adding, right? We're going to loop through all the views that are being added to this collection. And then we're going to add that view to the children. Now, this also means if your e dot action inject boom that views collection changed okay and the action obviously is going to be add so let's go ahead and step into this and so for each of the new items which actually we only have one right should be the view a that we're injecting perfect we're going to loop through each of those items and the region target which is the stack panel instance there it is the children, we're going to add that view. And so that should be it. Let me remove those. And boom. Hello from view. Boop. A. Okay. Pretty easy, right? I mean, that's it. That really. In 24 minutes, even with me babbling about and all my spelling errors I'm fixing, that's really all there is to creating custom region adapters. The only thing that gets complex is the complexity of your control. So 
I'm looking at the comments here and someone says something about the infragistics controls. Zulture Lord is currently saving up for an infragistics WPF license. Zulture Lord, you don't have to save up, my friend. If you watch and comment on my YouTube series, Desktop to Web, you can win one for free. Did you not know that? Did you guys not know that? Hold on, let me open up. Maybe I haven't been doing a good job of talking about this. So if you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.slash Brian Lagunas, uh, you're going to see a series called Desktop to Web. Uh, I bet it's going to autoplay. Hey everyone, it? today is a great day. It is. Yeah, it autoplayed. Okay. Well, this is my Desktop to Web series. And for every video I record, I actually give away a license to Infragistics Ultimate. For every single video. So I have what? One, two, three, four. Uh, ooh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have like 11 licenses I've given away already. So every single video, I give away a license to Infragistics Ultimate. And that includes controls for WPF, Angular, Windforms, Xamarin, ASP.NET, React, like all that stuff. Everything we have, uh, you get for free. So if you really want to win a license, Zulture Lord, just start watching these videos, commenting, subscribing, and saying, hey... I want to win, and uh, maybe you'll get lucky and you'll win one. So, uh, good luck. Okay, so we want to talk about something more complicated, right? Uh, yeah, Zulture Lord, I think you told me that in Slack. Okay. Yeah, I did tell you that in Slack. I liked it, all that stuff. Just currently waiting to get lucky. Well, you need to comment on every video. Not just one, like every one of them. You got to re-enter every video in case you didn't know. It's not one and done. All right, so let's change things up a little bit. Actually, what's installed? Do I even have Infragistics installed? Oh, my God. Let's let's take a look. Oh, I need to be on a... Let's go to view A here. Let me look at my toolbox. Let me see if I have the latest version of Infragistics installed. And maybe we'll do something more complicated. Oh, man. I didn't know showing a toolbox would get Visual Studio 2019 to stop responding. Beautiful. Well, while that hopefully comes back, I'm going to open up a uh, an internet tab over here. And drag it on over. And we'll wait for Visual Studio to, re to respond. Okay. So if you go to my blog... Uh, let's see, search for, let's see, how about doc manager? I think I blogged about this. Yes, I did. Woohoo. Sweetness. So this is update three of the Xam doc manager region adapter. So let me just, I think I put this on GitHub. Yes, I did. Whew. Thank goodness. So let's go ahead and go to this. And I'm going to just download it. Let's download zip file. And I'm going to show in folder because I have no idea where this was just put. Oh, it was put in my downloads. Well, that makes way too much sense. Okay. Oh, actually, let me just show you what I'm doing here because this is actually a common mistake. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Windows has this horrible mark of the web. When you download a zip file from the internet, you have to always go on properties and unblock. Apply. If you don't do that, then you're asking for trouble in Visual Studio. It might not compile. You might get build errors, all that crazy stuff. So I'm actually going to extract this. And where is that? Okay. And I'm also going to do something else to this. For one, I'm going to change this to test. And then I'm going to drag this to my desktop because I don't want that 260 character. What's that character limit of Windows? I don't remember. It's, it's not very long, right? 
Uh, so let's... Okay. I'm going to close this. Because I'm done in there. I'm done in there. What I want to do is I'm going to open up this bad boy. Let me change this to test. No character limits for us. So yeah, where's Dan? Dan is actually in Houston, Texas, getting ready for the uh, Xamarin Developer Summit this week. So that's what he's doing. All right. Okay, so I'm trying 2017 this time. And it looks like this might work. I wonder how old this project is. All right, so let's get rid of, okay, that's good. Let's go to Solution Explorer. Let me get rid of that. What do we have here? Let me look at some 14 too. Woo! Oh man, look at this old school. Microsoft.practices.prism. Do you guys know how old this is? Holy crap. Wow. That is, that's old. This is an old project. Okay, so let's go ahead and upgrade this. Ooh, this is gonna be a good test just in general. Uh, let's go manage Nuka packages. Yeah, this is this is history right here. Let's see what's broken. This is gonna be a good test, like what exactly is broken? Almost like a mini update. Like let's upgrade from an old version of, of Prism to the new version and see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens. Heck, this isn't even using Nougat. So let's go prism uh, dot unity. There we go. And sure, let's uh, let's use the pre-release. How about that? And I just need it in the. Is this the project? Yeah. Okay. So that's the core. We'll install that in the core. And then I'll only need. WPF for the other two. Oh my God, that's how old, oh my, I gotta update. This is really an old project. What do we got here? Client profile, oh my goodness. Old school. When's the last time you guys did the, uh, the .NET 4 uh, client profile? Stranger things have happened. That's true. Let's up, let's upgrade all these. And this should be the last one. You know what that tells me? That tells me I need to actually go update that GitHub repo. That's what that tells me. I'll be sure to do that. All right. Uh, now let's try this again. Manage Nika packages. Browse, Prism Unity, give me that, give me this, install. Let's see what happens now. And I did it two months ago. I had to do a module for a Windows XF application, retro coding. Yep. Okay. Is it working? What's taking so long? I know I'm connected to the internet because I'm live streaming right now. So internet connectivity is not an issue. Come on, Nougat. Where are you at? Well, I guess while that happens, we can look at the, uh, the region adapter. Because we can look at code while that works, right? put I'll pin it at the bottom just so I can monitor what it's doing it's still attempting to gather dependency information for the package which is crazy okay so we'll go ahead and just inspect what a more complicated region adapter looks like okay 
Xfire CS. Today I said my manager that we will use Prism for now on, and he accepted it. Damn straight. Throw down the gauntlet. This is how it's going to be, right? Uh, the company is currently changing from wind forms to WPF step by step. And I will do the UI stuff. Awesome. That's amazing. All right. And for some reason, Nougat is not happy, but we'll keep looking. So we'll ignore these properties for now. Okay. So we have our constructor. We saw this. This is the I region behavior factory that's passed into the base, right? We saw that. Uh, we have this adapt method. We're, we're familiar with the adapt. We know this is where we actually add uh, the views, the incoming views to the hosting control, which in this case is an Infragistics tab group pane. Okay. Uh, are you going to talk about modules today? Bonus stream. Uh, probably not too much, no. No, we'll, we'll leave modules for another day because modules are pretty simple, right? Uh, okay, so what we're doing here is we actually have a few things going on here. Uh, if I go back to my blog post, I believe I had some requirements in this blog post. And to do that, I might have to go back. I might have to go back to one of the first, first ones. Yeah, so, let's see. Nope, go back even further. Because I listed out the requirements for what this region adapter had to do. Uh, so, yeah, it was only intended to support a tab group pane. Will not support data binding to the item source of the tab group pane. That's very important. Uh, all views injectives must be of type user control. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. I wanted to support declaring content paints in XAML and injecting views into content panes. So not only did I want to be able to inject views using region navigation, I also wanted to be able to just uh, declare content paints in XAML, right? So a little, little complication there. Uh, views must be removed from the region when closed. Yep. Support iActive Aware. That makes sense. As you click on different tabs, I want to, you know, know what's uh, what's active, which one's active, and have the ability to control the uh, header property. Okay. What else did I add? So I added support for activation, uh, support for remove, and floating panes. Okay. So you can see in a complex control like a dock manager, things get a little more complicated. Actually, a lot more complicated. Uh, and as you code, more and more and more uh, issues come up that you'll have to actually figure out. So let's go back to code. Oh, it finally worked. Okay. Add that. Sweet. I don't know why that took so freaking long. That was ridiculous. Wasn't it? Wasn't that ridiculous? Okay. Ugh. That's one thing I hate about nougat oh no it installed it okay good i was about to freak out because do you remember when you, nougat wouldn't even install if uh if your project didn't build so if you were on a plane somewhere flying in the sky right it would not boom it would not work because you couldn't build because you can connect and install dependencies and it's like Ah, uh, it's so much better now. It's all cash. It's just much better. Uh, so we'll wait six years for that to happen. So let's just kind of go back through. Oh, no, it worked pretty quickly, actually. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Okay, okay. Yep, that's fine. Maybe we can upgrade this. So we need to get rid of all those. Yes. Uh, get rid of that and that. Boop. Okay. And let's get rid of that. Perfect. Okay, so now I need the dock manager. Which I believe, ha 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 ha. I can do that. Because I have that local too. Boom, dock manager. Infragistics dock manager, install. 
Do you guys know that Inference 6 has all their controls and NuGet packages? We do, and it's amazing. That's why I didn't have anything in my toolbox, because I don't use my toolbox anymore. I just get everything from, uh, from NuGet. Okay. We are done here. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Those are old. No longer need those. Okay. Get that. Don't need these two. Uh, boop. Got that one. Okay. I think I fixed all those. Okay. I think we got it. Uh, let's see. Actually, I didn't need to add it to that, but I did anyways. So now we've upgraded from a very, very old version. So let's unpin that and look at our error list. Practices. All right, let's do this. We're gonna find and replace that to just Prism.regions. Replace all. No, not current document. Entire solution. Yes. All right. What's our next one? Was that it? No, that can't be it. Let's build this. It can't be that easy. I know I have an I module that has to be fixed. Here we go. Here we go. Here's some more. Oh, right there. Okay. So this is kind of how I update older versions. I use a uh, find replace a lot, especially for namespaces. Cause that is the easiest replace all. Yes. Okay. That's the entire solution. What else do we have? Build. Okay, so infrastructure is fixed. Let's go to the module. I know this one's broken. Okay, go in here. Here we go. So actually, I don't need that at all. We gotta fix that. Boop. And we will delete this. That's the only place this is used. We're not gonna need that container. And actually, we don't need any of that. Actually, yeah, we don't need any of this. That can all go away. Because as you can see, I had no code in there. So, there. Boom. That was easy. Okay, any more errors in that one? It's kind of fun. Okay, let's go ahead and... Fix this one. And entire solution, replace all. Yes. Oh, only one occurrence of that. Okay. That was boring. Uh, okay, let's try this again. We'll use the new Prism application instead of the old Bootstrapper. Yes. Yes, if you're upgrading an app, if you can switch to the new... Uh, application class if you can you don't have to but it's it's recommended like this is using the bootstrapper it will probably continue to use the bootstrapper okay this is actually did i add that doc manager igwpf where's my igw oh right here what the doc manager should be in there all right, doesn't matter. I'll fix it. Infragistics, controls, stock manage. Where's the freaking dock manager? Editors. Did I not add that? Yeah, it's right there. Dock manager. Okay. Oh, look at this. Look. Oh, that's how old school this is. You see this? Codeplex. Codeplex.com slash prism. Oh, my God. This is really old. That's amazing. 
actually let's go where's my intelligence oh because I'm an idiot <laughs> come on guys there it is I don't know why they didn't come up when I first typed it so we'll just replace this with that Okay, now let's see if we build. This would be even better if we can get it to work. Data grid, da data grid? What data grid? Am I using data grid? Oh, that's a data grid. Oh, maybe I had it right the first time. I didn't realize that this thing used a data grid. Let's just uh, add the data grid. I was missing a uh, complete control. Pay attention, Brian. Data grade. Boop. Install. This isn't too painful. All right, added package. Perfect. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, this should work now because I added the missing control. I didn't even know this used a uh, data grid. More problems. Here we go. Okay. So this is using the bootstrapper. So let's go ahead and fix this okay get rid of that get rid of that okay uh, and we are actually using unity here so we need to add using unity I think it's just unity right Yep, get rid of this. And get rid of that. Okay. Oh, what's this say? Oh yeah, this says, don't use this anymore. Use the application class. Well, I don't wanna spend time on that right now for this demo. All right. I might have to fix a view model actually, yeah. See, I should have used find replace, but I didn't. Should have used find replace. Oh, see how bad this is? Look how bad this code is. Look at this. Blasphemy. This is horrible. Why on earth am I passing the container into this view model? This is like a huge no-no. Don't ever do this. Don't do what I just did here. Why did I do that? Oh, it's so ugly. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I apologize. Pretend you didn't see that. I'm going to close that view because I don't even want to look at that. Okay. Okay. I think we got it. We, we converted this old ass application to a brand new Prism 7 dot XXXX preview. It wasn't that painful, was it? Find replace helps a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this over and we're gonna see these are defined in XAML. But if I double click on that, we added this awesome view to the dock manager and I can pull this off and it's active, not active, active. Let's open up another tab. You see this? I'm gonna drag it into this bad boy. Active, true, active. Yep, just drag it off in its own little thing. This is true, active, false. Look how awesome this is. This is amazing. And I could just keep opening these by double clicking. Sweet, I forgot how awesome this is. Oh, what if I did one, boom. So that's active. I'm gonna click on the bottom. Now this one's active and that one's false. Dude, this is pretty, I forgot how awesome this was. 
And see, now neither of them are active because I clicked over here. Sweet. All right. Pretty cool, right? Okay, let's go look at the uh, behavior because I got sidetracked upgrading that. All right, so we got this... Uh, not the behavior. The adapter. Sorry. The adapter. Let's close everything except the region adapter. There we go. All right, so this one's much more involved and complicated, right? Uh, so the first thing we said is we're not going to support data binding to the item source. So I said, hey, if the region target item source is, isn't null, throw an exception because I'm not going to allow data binding to the item source and injecting. So we threw a, a, an exception here saying, hey, it's associated with the region, but it's already data bound. So nope, no good. Uh, Tyranius 90. When I upgraded from an older Prism version, it was not so easy for me. There was some failure with the version of the Unity container. Oh yeah, Unity is a big pain in the butt. Uh, they've broken us a number of times, and it's it's a it's really hard. And it's, that's actually what motivated us to create that new abstraction, that I container provider and I container registry, is to help protect ourselves from the containers breaking us because that Unity break, it's still being felt still. Okay, so in this adapt, we first check to see if the item source is not null, because if they are, they're data binding, and we don't allow that. Next, we're synchronizing items. Now, remember the requirement said, hey, I'm going to allow you to define these in XAML, and I'm going to allow you to inject them. So let's see what synchronize items does. We have the region target. We're going through all the items, and we're going to say, hey, if there's more than one, yes, great. Well, for each item, object or each item in the items collection we're going to manually add them to the region you see what i did there i said you know what these views are in this region or in this control that's defined as a region but they're defined in xaml so technically they're not in the region element i need that in that region collection so i'm looping through here and i'm manually adding them to the region so it's all good right now Prepare item container for item. Uh, let's get back to this, right? Well, because I use this in more than one spot. So let's go back. Uh, now, this code should look familiar. You know, collect views collection changed, right? This is where we're going to control how these items are being added. So right here. Uh, oh, don't want to miss this. Create region. Remember, you have all active region and single active region. This is a single active region because the doc manager allows you to select one tab at a time, right? It's not a uh, multi-active area, so it's single active region. So now we're handling our action. Okay, when we add this object or we add a view to this control, to this region, right? Right here, I made a little comment. You know, we want to we want to add the behind any previous views that have already been declared in XAML, right? So we have this index that I had to control. I wanted them added behind uh, those for whatever reason. So once I had the index of where I'm positioning them, uh, for each of the views we're injecting, this is how we're adapting them, I'm preparing the container for item. Whoa, what do you mean container? Well, let's, let's just take a look, right? So we're passing in the view and the region. Let's go to this method. And so I am creating an infragistics content pane, okay? Because you can't just throw a user control in a complex control like a docking manager. They have, those, those controls have their own infrastructure, their own object model. So we have to actually create and work with their object model. So we create this content pane that's gonna act as a wrapper, okay? So first I check to see if the item is a content pane. Because maybe they're not using a user control. Maybe they're using a content pane instead. They're just all in XAML. Uh, however, if they're not, we're going to create a new one. And we're setting the content of that content pane, this infragistics content pane, uh, to an item, to that view, right? That's the view being injected. We're making sure the container has the same data context. We have this value is generated. So remember what we were doing. We were allowing the adding of views in XAML and by injecting. But I needed to know if we were injecting them that I created it and it wasn't user created because that's important for this. So what I did was I added an attached property up here called is generated. And it allowed me to track that state for each of those. 
Okay, so you can kind of see my thought process on, on how I create these more complex region adapters. All right, then I create dock aware bindings. Uh, this is kind of cool because remember one of those uh, requirements was I needed to be able to control the header information and, and things like that. So I introduced an interface called iDoc Aware. Let's go ahead and open that up actually. Uh, and I use this interface to basically set the header of the tabs. It's pretty simple and I can set that from within my view models uh, by implementing this interface, right? So with that interface, I create a binding to the header property of the content pane. And I just do this in XAML, I mean uh, in C Sharp. I don't have to do it in XAML, I did it all in C Sharp. So I set the binding after creating it pretty straightforward, right? Let's back up a little bit, uh, back up again. Okay, then I set the value, the region property to the container. This is another attached property because we needed to keep track of which region the container belonged to because you could have multiple regions in different areas of the dock manager. I mean, this gets really complex. So I needed to store that off. So once again, I have an attached property, which I could attach that information to the region. And of course, uh, we have to, to remove the views when they're closed, right? So I just have a closed action. I hooked it to this event. And so whenever the, uh, the closed event of the container is invoked, we come down here, you see this? We're getting the content pane. We're unsubscribing from that event. And look at this. This is where we are grabbing that attached property, the region, because we have to know which region this view was added to so we can remove it. Because if you have five different regions in your doc manager, we need to remove from the correct one. So that's how I was able to grab that information, right? So I made sure it was there and removed it and then did all my cleanup, reduced any memory leaks, always reduce memory leaks. Uh, that's very important. Okay, so after we prepare this item, we have the content pane and then it's, it's pretty straightforward. Once we have our content pane in our index of where we're inserting it, region target dot items insert index content pane. I mean, on the surface, it may look really complicated when you start thinking about it for these complex controls. But when you really get into it, it's really not that bad, right? It's really quite simple. As long as you understand your requirements, you can start just picking away at them one at a time, right? Like when I did uh, right here on the on the ad, oh, 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 up here, I just started picking away at my requirements one at a time. First, hey, you're not allowed to data bind. That's requirement. Whoop, check. Next, yeah, anything you've defined in XAML, I'm going to add to the region automatically. Boom, right? Requirement two down. Now we're going to handle adding, removing. So when you create these complex uh, region adapters, you can s just take it one requirement at a time. Okay, keep it simple because this is really quite simple. Uh, I actually have a note in here because there was an issue. We have to bring the tab group pane into view because if you don't do that, I was getting a stack overflow exception. It was a weird one. Actually, let's see if it's been fixed. I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to run it again. Because this was in 2014, I think. So five years ago. I wonder if this issue has been fixed or not in the control itself. I bet it hasn't. You guys want to start taking bets? Let's see. Let's go ahead and double click. Double click. Oh my goodness, it was fixed. Look at that. It was fixed. Butamus. I love it. Nice. Oh, and I even forgot I have these commands up here. Uh, so, okay. 068, where's 06? This is 068. Uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so active is false. I actually have a command over here. I can activate it. See that? True. So it's false. I can come click this button. Activate. True. So I can programmatically activate it. 
Or I can programmatically boop, close it. Freaking sweet, man. I forgot how awesome this thing was. Okay. So after we... Uh, that, I'm, that's awesome. I'm so happy that was fixed. I can remove that. Uh, so now, you know, we've inserted the content pane. The next step is to remove it, right? Well, this is pretty straightforward as well. We're going to get the dock manager. We're going to get all the panes in it. And for each of the content panes, we're going to loop through, make sure that the ones we're removing are in there. And then we're just simply going to execute the command to close them. Very straightforward. So on the, like I said, on the surface, you know, a dock manager could be very intimidating, but actually it's not that bad. And this is all on my GitHub. Uh, actually, if you were to just search my, my blog and uh, you can kind of see my explanations behind things. Uh, I think I even have a behavior in here as well, which I don't have really time to talk about behaviors, but if you could see this active aware behavior, uh, essentially that's what's controlling, but let's run this again. Uh, the active aware behavior is the uh, requirement to support being active, the I active aware interface, right? Remember that requirement in my blog post? And so what this behavior does, it allows me to, to attach the iActiveWare functionality uh, to these injected views. So as I see it says true, I could pull it off. And no matter if it's floating or not, I know if it's active or not. So in my view model, I can perform saves or closes, or that's how this is actually working. I get the active one and then I close it. Uh, so before I hop into that, let's go back to the adapter because you can override on the adapter attached behaviors. So any custom behaviors you do have, you can attach either globally or like to every type of adapter there is or to a specific adapter. In this case, I added it to this very specific adapter. I'm attaching uh, the behaviors. And this behavior is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, of course, it's very similar. It has an unattached uh, method that we hook into. We have collection changed. Uh, it's very similar to an adapter, uh, but it allows you to add additional behavior to that adapter. Uh, so yeah, I know I went over a lot. I went over pretty quick, but essentially the logic or the process doesn't change from the very simple stack panel that we did uh, at the beginning of the stream to this very complex dock manager type uh, region adapter. The process is the same. The only thing that changes is your requirements and the complexity of the logic you have to implement to achieve those requirements. Uh, yeah, man, that's that's it. That's that's all there is to region adapters. And there's lots of them out there. Uh, you know, actually, I don't use Telerec, but I'm sure someone, uh, I think they have a rad dock manager, Prism region adapter. I'm sure these exist, just uh, Google for them. Oh, there's mine. Well, maybe it doesn't. Uh, okay. Well, I guess if you're using uh, Telerik, you're SOL, right? I guess no one wants to share their code for that. Yeah. Avalon Doc has a region adapter. Avalon Doc is a free open source docking manager. Uh, so that's an option as well. Uh, yeah, I don't actually don't see one for the Riot Doc Manager. What about the Dev Express? WPF Doc Manager. Oh, yep, right here, right here. So if you're using Dev Express, it looks like maybe they have one uh, for their control. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. They didn't provide a link. Uh, but yeah, if there's a if there's a control you're using that you need a, a region adapter for, there's a chance that I've... If you're using Infragistics, I already have the region adapter for you. It's, it's there. From the tab control to the region adapter to the Outlook group uh, to the ribbon. Like, yeah. And where's my blog post? Where's my blog? Right here. So I think I even did one for uh, ribbon. I think I posted that here too. Oh, uh, okay. 
Well, not exactly the same thing. I do have a ribbon region adapter because I use it in my uh, IG Outlook, uh, my IG Outlook app that's on my GitHub page. Uh, but this one, this WPF uh, Zam Doc Manager floating panes and Zam ribbon menu integration. This is actually a really great post uh, because what's what's complicated about like production applications like this gets into those very advanced scenarios because imagine you have a ribbon menu that you want to invoke on objects that are floating in windows right well you have to activate those behaviors onto floating windows that are no longer part of that visual tree that data context nothing and that window has to maintain focus and maintain its its active state, right? Uh, so yeah, I solved that problem here. We'll delete, we'll close that. Basically showing you how, oh, the, wow, the, uh, the code got really messed up here. WordPress. But as you can see, I had to actually filter HWIN source messages and like, like some crazy stuff to get that to work properly. However, it allows you to perform menu actions in your main window, your main application shell against floating windows that are not connected at all, which is freaking badass if you ask me. Uh, all about keyboard focus and mouse focus and, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Check it out. Just uh, Zamdoc, Zamdoc Manager, Floating Panes, and Zam Ribbon Menu Integration. That's a very common scenario. When did I write this? 2013 is when I wrote this. Holy crap. I should probably do a video on this and like renew it because it's that cool. So, all right, guys. Well, hey, I haven't seen any questions come in. Uh, so, I think now is a good time to start wrapping this bad boy up. Uh, if you do have any questions, please reach out to me. You can contact me. The easiest way to contact me is really on Twitter. Uh, where's my... Oh, here they are. Uh, Twitter. Yeah, if, if you do the LinkedIn thing, sure. Uh, or YouTube. I don't... I'm never on Facebook. I don't even know why I have that there. I don't even bother with it. It's a waste of time. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'll pause for a few minutes while more questions come through. If there are any. Otherwise, thank you for uh, sharing this last hour with me and watching me uh, go through region adapters for WPF and PRISM. So I will stand by for uh, any questions. Oh, we have a question. Tyranius 90. Shoot, shoot, friend. What do you got? Must be a long one. It's taking a while to type out. Oh, why do you think it's bad practice to inject the Unity container? Great question. And I kind of covered this in the last stream when I talked about dependency injection. Uh, essentially, when you are dealing with dependency injection containers, there's a rule that says you should only have one composition root. Okay. Uh, and from there, that's the only place the container exists. And the reason for that is because it's in general bad practice to pass the container around because you're creating a tight coupling around that container, right? So we're here. This is where I did the big no-no, right? Right here. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. You don't want to inject your container because it creates a coupling to that container into your view model. Uh, your view model should not be using a container directly. I mean, let's be honest. If you need to create views, like this should have been some type of view factory if I wanted some mechanism to just create views real quick. So I'm going to have to like really completely rewrite this because this is bad practice. And if people are following this example on my GitHub, uh, I'm sorry. This is probably I did it just for a quick and dirty. I need to stop doing quick and dirties for stuff I published publicly. Uh, because someone might see that and say, oh, well, Brian did it that way. It's okay not knowing that I did it just to be quick and dirty. But yes, this is this is no good. You want one composition root. Now, when you're dealing with modules, it's slightly different. It's okay 
to have the container. Why did it do that? The container in your module, because you can think of the module as the composition root for all the functionality within that module, because modules can actually be shared across many applications, not just one. And we actually have quite a few customers that do that. They actually host, you know, like authentication modules on Nougat, right? And they could just inject that into any application they want. Uh, and it gives them standardized authentication in any app they build. But Prism has gotten away from that in a sense where we, you don't even need to know the container in the module anymore. So for example, there is no unity in this module, right? There's no, there's no nothing to do with container. We have iContainer Provider and iContainer Registry. This is our, our wrapper, if you will, our, our facade around containers to where you could still register things with your container. You can still resolve things with your container without actually having to have the container, which is awesome. And it protects everyone from breaks. Uh, but yeah, if you can, and I know it's hard in the real world, you have to be pragmatic. And sometimes you just have to break the rules and that's okay. The pattern police are not going to come arrest you and take you away to jail, right? Uh, just try to avoid it because it does make your code more brittle and subject to breaks. Uh, so yeah, just try to avoid it. If you can highly recommend not doing what you see here, uh, I'm going to slap myself in the face for doing that because that is a big no-no in my book. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? I'm still trying to think. I think next week I might try to learn Blazor with you guys. Maybe you guys can watch me fumble through trying to set up a Blazor wrap because I've heard good things about it. Uh, I just never personally looked at it. I don't think I've created a file new before. So that might be fun to figure out. Yeah, so I don't remember where I needed the uh, container in the view model, but it did not come around it. Yeah. Angular. Yes, you know what? Angular. I have been learning Angular, and I am really loving Angular. Uh, there's a lot of things that are much easier in Angular than the RWPF for sure. Built-in DI, which I love. Uh, all the comp I mean, the similarities are crazy between Angular and Prism and WPF. It's, it's really pretty crazy. Uh, how close they are. It's almost like they saw what Prism was doing and what WPF was doing. It's said, man, they got something going. Let's do that for the web. And they did that. It's pretty cool. So yeah, so what do you think? Like, uh, So on my YouTube channel, I am doing a desktop to web series. Maybe I just bring that to streaming and we just kind of all walk through it together uh, in steps. Because you know, those, those online, the, the YouTube videos are very short. They're like, five to 10 minutes max, very quick, very focused, not really going into detail, quick and dirty. Uh, but if we did on the stream, we can actually go into more detail about how things work and really play with the APIs and the functionality of, of Angular and what it provides. So that might be a good idea too. Angular.prism is the future, guys. You said it, my friend. We're living the future. But uh, all right, guys, well, that uh that's gonna call it i'm gonna call it that's it stream stream done uh thanks for joining me thanks for the great questions and i hope to see you all next week same time same place thanks again have a great day